today on Dr. Phil. She's searching for her biological mom. One of the things you found were mug shots, right? Now they'll be reunited. I lived underneath the George Washington Bridge. How did you reason through leaving your daughter with a sexually abusive man? And for the first time, she'll meet her half-sister. I am so sorry. Mm, you're not buying all of this, are you? No, I'm not. My mother is two-faced. Oh, my God. Why am I here? I find it shocking that you are indignant. These girls have issues with you. Plus, it's a reunion that made national news. Baby Veronica is the legal daughter of an adoptive couple. Yeah, they don't know where the child is. We're going to go drive by the location that they believe is where she's being hidden away. That's it right oh. there. There she is. Oh my God. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've heard long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Listen, take We're going to get you the help that you need. In five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. How are you doing? How are you? How are you guys? Well, 19 year old Stephanie says she had a great childhood. Popular cheerleader with a love of fishing and being outdoors but she always felt something was missing growing up. She was adopted, and she had a nagging desire to find out more about her past. She had no baby pictures, had no medical history. She especially wanted answers about her birth mother. She recently started her search on the Internet. With little more than a name to go on, she immediately found a picture. Not what anyone would hope for. It was a mugshot. Not one, but several. And now, she says, more than ever, she wants to find her birth mother and get the truth. My life growing up as a child was more than perfect. My mom and dad were always there for me for everything. But I always did feel a little like an outsider because I wasn't blood-related. I never had the baby pictures, or I always was wondering, where did my eyes come from? Where did my nose come from? I started looking into my birth parents when I was about 16. Through my adoption paperwork, I have learned a lot about my biological mother, how she was an exotic dancer, how she moved all over the place and became homeless. I decided to go onto the internet once I found out my mother's full name. And the first thing that I found was Darlene Crystal's mugshots. She was arrested for prostitution, possession of cocaine, assault. I found multiple mugshots and I came across a mugshot of her smiling, which that one really seemed to anger me because I don't understand that it seemed she was happy to be in that situation. I was shocked to know that this woman could be my birth mother. Her eyes were identical to mine. Her nose was identical to mine. Her hair color was the same as mine. Her height, her weight, and everything just connected so much. But seeing it through a mugshot was so hard for me to try to take it all in. But it was also a little comforting just to know. Well, Stephanie says finding the mug shots gave her some comfort, but it also made her feel angry inside about who her mom may really be. In my adoption paperwork, I read about two previous children that were born before me. Both of them were taken by the state as well. After I was born, there was one child after me. I have very brief memories of my younger sister. I remember an infant being there, and I remember just being alone. I don't have any memories of my mother. The type of person that would allow the state to take away four of your children is careless. She was just someone that was just carrying children and just giving them out there. She had no respect for herself. She had no care about any of her children that carrying a child for nine months meant nothing to her. This woman is biologically my mother, but she's absolutely not someone I would even call a mother. Well, a few weeks ago, Stephanie got serious about this, and when you get serious about finding somebody, you reach out to the locator, Troy Dunn. So please welcome Troy Dunn.
good to see you and good to meet you. Good to meet you too. One of the things you found were mug shots, right? So we did a paper chase uh, not to find her, but to find out about her. And so we found a list of Darlene's arrest and criminal charges. They are significant. August 23rd, 96, disorderly conduct. November 22nd, same year, general prostitution. Six days in jail. January, three years later, possession of paraphernalia, drug paraphernalia. April 11th, 99, possession of cocaine. She's constantly coming into conflict with the authorities. That took two pages, uh, rap sheet wise. How do you feel about that? It hurts, but I'm not surprised. I need the answers. I just need to know that I put myself out there and I had tried and I need to, I wish I could just hear it from her view. What you just saw is so radically different. I worry that at, at 19 years old with the life you've lived that this might be possibly more than you can handle. I feel that I'm just ready to know. So if she is alive, and if we know where she is, would you want that information so you could meet her with all of the precautions we're presenting to you here? Yes, I'm so ready for it. So what have you found? Well, she is alive. She has definitely lived the life that you've seen on that, that screen. But somewhere in her, there was enough courage to say that she would like to come forward and meet you. I'm ready to meet her. Well, she's here. Her name is Darlene. Let's bring her out. <coughs> See okay. right over here. You can take my chair for now. You two sit down. Um, tell me how you feel about being here. I'm, uh, I'm overwhelmed. I'm joyful. I'm fearful. I hope I'm, I'm good enough. I've thought about you every day. <clears throat> um, I'm happy to see you. I'm happy that you wanted to come. It's hard for me to say, like, accept the fact that you thought of us or me every day. So she has a lot of hard Absolutely questions understand. for you. And I think she deserves the answers. Absolutely. Well, we're going to ask those questions and we're going to give you the opportunity to answer them right after the break. When I heard that my daughter Stephanie was looking for me, my first reaction was just joy. And then came the fear. What would she think of me? Am I going to be good enough? I lived underneath the George Washington Bridge. If I had taken Stephanie to be where I was living, they would have certainly raped and murdered her, not necessarily in that order. If I find my biological mother, I know I wouldn't be welcoming her with open arms because she just gave up on us. Deep down, I don't think that she's gonna care to come forward because it, it seems that she has a history of not caring about any of her children. Well, despite Stephanie's prediction, her birth mother did come forward and actually surprised Stephanie on our stage just a few moments ago. So let's listen to this tape first, then we'll talk. When I heard that my daughter Stephanie was looking for me, my first reaction was disbelief and just joy. And then came the fear. What would she think of me? Am I going to be good enough? Growing up, physical and sexual abuse occurred on a continual basis. I was about 16 when I became permanently homeless. I lived underneath the George Washington Bridge. The winter times were brutal. You get so dehydrated, you're taking snow, dirty, nasty snow, and you're eating it. While I was homeless, I met this man, and he offered to take me into his home, not realizing, of course, that I was already pregnant and 
Later on, when we developed our relationship, we were both really believing at first that indeed he was the father of Stephanie. The man treated Stephanie like a complete princess, but he became physically and sexually very abusive toward me. One time I threatened to leave, and then the man tied me up for three days and tortured me by putting cigarettes out on my body. I had to get out of that situation. After I left this man and Stephanie, unfortunately, I had to leave her behind. Back to panhandling. If I had taken Stephanie to be where I was living in my little cardboard box, they would have certainly raped and murdered her, not necessarily in that order. And then one day, I got enough change together to take the bus over to where she was staying, and she was gone. Stephanie was one and a half years old the last time I have seen her. This man was abusing you. Yes. <clears throat> sexually and physically and, and all, after he took you in from being homeless. H how did you reason through leaving your daughter with a physical and sexually abusive man? Because it was just me. You knew what he was capable of, and, and you leave a defenseless child with him. I'm just curious how you reason through that. I, 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 well, I don't know. You went back. You said you got up enough he change to get on the bus and go back. And she was gone. Uh, what were you going to do when you got there? Because I would, I would go to visit her. <clears throat> I would, I would go to see her, or he would bring her to see me. When you went back under the bridge, is that what you're saying? He would bring her to you Well, on not the in the bridge. We would go to a park. We would go to a park. I would clean up enough where, it, you know, he'd bring me baby wipes so I could clean up. Of course, I wasn't going to touch my child, mm -hmm. you know, or if I thought I had to. And there was times where I've had lice, and it was impossible. There was just no way. But but he, was, he was not the birth father. Right? Come to find out, no, he was not. And did you, did you, um, were you on drugs at the time? Um, it was afterwards, yeah, when I felt all of his losses, when I turned to drugs, Dr. Phil. So when I get asked to take on a case, I get thousands of emails every week. I know. Thousands. I was, and just... when I read hers, I wanted to help her. She's as young as some of my children. But then when I located you, I was really concerned about pulling you into her life. Because right. while I want to answer her questions, I don't want I didn't any want to harm expose... to her of well, any on. kind. You chose drugs over her. You chose alcohol over her. You <clears> chose <throat> a tunnel over a... You didn't no. choose her. No, I didn't. And I take full responsibility. I've done a lot of very foolish things. I think I just didn't care about me anymore. How many siblings does she have that she doesn't know about? Three. So you've had four children? Yes. Mm -hmm. How many have you raised? One until the age of ten. Why keep having children? My last two were rapes. <laughs> and instead of having an abortion, I wanted them to have a chance, any chance, <clears throat> to have a life. I'm sorry. Well, Stephanie says that her adoptive parents told her a few years ago uh, that she had siblings. But what she doesn't know is that Troy's team found <laughs> Her older <laughs> half sister, Crystal. <laughs> Would you like to meet her? Yes. <laughs> I can see they look so much alike. He's a big oh. Thank you. <laughs> it's uh, so good to meet you. Have a seat right here if you would. Well, next, Stephanie says that she has had a great childhood and is happy that she was adopted, that she got out, that it made it was the right thing for her. But what happened to her sister? Was she just as lucky? We're going to find out after the break. I believe I've been arrested between 20 to 30 times. I was arrested for prostitution, drug possession, probation violation, domestic violence. I've had two DUIs. I ended up actually doing a year in a woman's prison because I violated probation. Come on vacation, end up on probation, come back on violation. That's the motto in Florida. 
don't resent the fact that my biological mother gave me and my siblings up. If anything, I would thank her for it. State taking us away it was a blessing in disguise. I got into cheerleading, I played field hockey, I did soccer, I did every sport I possibly could do. Because I made it, and because I'm a much better person without living with her. Unfortunately, Stephanie's sister, Crystal, was not so lucky. While I was living with my mother, I saw mostly her back <laughs> walking out the door. The smell of alcohol on her breath. I also remember playing dress up with her strip of clothes and coming across a bag of a powdered white substance in one of her shoes. I believe the state came and took me away because of the neglect. Being in foster care was terrifying. I did have a foster mother who did sexually abuse me. She had touched me and she had made me perform sexual acts on her. One time I had an accident on myself and she made me eat my feces. They placed me in foster home after foster home until no more foster parents wanted me anymore. I ended up being involved in abusive relationships and meeting men that would force me into prostitution. And I was dancing and doing drugs. I got pregnant at 17. I was forced to give my oldest child up for adoption. I was almost 20 years old when I got pregnant again with my second child. I felt ashamed for allowing myself to follow the footsteps of a horrible past. I do blame my mother because what I went through as a child played a humongous part of my life. I am so sorry. I am, I am so incredibly sorry. Mm, you're not buying all of this, are you? Oh, whoa, I didn't no, know. No, I'm not. I didn't I know. I never have. Okay, tell me about that. There's been nothing but broken promises. Um, I feel like my mother is two-faced. Oh. She'll pretend she'll love me in front of people, but she really doesn't. Because any mother who I loves somebody, know. any mother who loves somebody will take the effort to look for their child Good. and to be there. <laughs> and you were with, you were with your mother until how old? I was not with my mother until 10. She's been so much under the influence that she's lost track of time. Yeah. I remember the state stepping in at the age of three. Three. And, and I want to just understand what your experiences were because you said that when you were with her that she had abusive men around you. Absolutely. Uh-huh. And that at one point she actually stole your identity. Yes. Um, if you were to put my name into Google, um, it will show up my mother's mugshots. If you type my name, right. my mother's pictures show up. Mm -hmm. And it has affected my employment. Mm -hmm. What do you want to say? I'm sorry, but that's not stolen identity. But for some reason, because our names are so f fim similar with Our names name. are not similar. I never used your name. You before. used my name. Utilities and everything else. You used my name. You think she's still hiding information, don't you? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, okay. All right, well, is there anything else Darlene is hiding? Plus, where can this family go from here? We're going to talk about all that when we come back. You have a very poignant question. Very simply, if you love me so much, if you were so troubled, if you were so pained, why did you never look for me? Yes. That's her question to you. All hope for me as being your mother was made perfectly clear to me 
at 10, and you were till 10. And they absolutely told me, under no circumstances, that I was to even try to contact you, to try to find you. And at that point, I thought, you know what? These children are better off without me. <laughs> Let them have a life. I wish you could have came to me. Would have ever been a time, even without all of this, would, no. that you have no. never. I always never. felt that there was Look some at the sort state of, of mind that you're in. Look at the state of mind that you've been in. How can anybody, I can't even get a word in. I can't even say, I love you, mom, because you're all over the place. And every time you call me, you're under the influence of something, whether it's pills or alcohol, and don't sit here and lie. Okay. Enough with the lies. All right. You need to be real with yourself. All right. I've just started um, working on, I have um, bipolar. No, I'm, 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 that's not an excuse. And you so find I an excuse for medication. everything. I'm not trying to make an You excuse. make an I'm excuse for facts. everything. I'm trying to but give her facts. everything. <clears throat> it's time to stop talking and start listening. It's time to help yourself. I, I don't have any hope. There is no hope. There is hope. There is hope. We're sitting here. There's hope. We're sitting here. There is plenty of hope. And you should have had hope from the moment that I contacted you. And the day that I met you, it was around Christmas. You came up. And you came up under the influence. But I've... And that's the same way how I remember it as a child. What mother does that? You did not try hard enough. There's no, no thing not. in trying when you're a mother. You do it. I'm confused. I, I'm, I'm kind of ashamed to even yeah. mention that you are my mother, but you are my mother. Um, just because of the hurt that I've had. Oh but let me God. ask you something. Let me ask you something. Oh, my Honestly, God. Why am I when, here? When you're living... Why didn't you just come with that's her? That's how why you am feel? I even here? There's the abandonment again. Well, that's what I'm saying. You just said that There's you have no abandon. use for me, Crystal. I never said I didn't have any use for that's you. That's how I'm taking it. That's how I'm feeling That's right how now. you're taking it. But let me ask you that's this. That's what I heard. Let me ask you this. You said I'm seven not your years mother. Ago, I'm seven not no years ago, when I met you, was I homeless? Yes. Okay, and where were you living? In Florida, and I asked exactly. you to come with us. Really? At this point in time. I'm your daughter, I'm homeless. I you chose your, your ex-husband over me. I couldn't find her. She, she dipped on me, I could not find that's her. That's a lie. I've had the same number for several years, Dr. Uh, Phil. No, that's, that's not true, Crystal Marie. Okay. I have records. <laughs> I have books. Well, I write every, I've written everything okay, down. Okay, listen. All right, bottom line is, I've I'm, I'm been working on getting help, Dr. Phil. And I need a lot more. I'm looking to you. I'm just gonna put my feet up here. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I was here to be doing? the. the uh, I'm sorry, but this needs to. Say. You, you say you am. didn't know you were here to be the jackass? But I am. Well, if you're a jackass, it was before you got here, right? Oh, oh I'm even more. I'm a bigger one now. Well, How do what we I feel is, Dr. Phil? What do we do? Where do we go from here? <clears throat> it's where do you go? What do you do? What, okay. What if I... All right. Ask it's going to be my turn. Okay. Sorry. Your turn. Because uh, <laughs> I am going to bring some order to this chaos <clears throat> right after God. the break. It's been said that time heals all wounds, but my guests today um, are kind of saying, eh, not so much in this case. Uh, Stephanie and Crystal say they have a lot of questions, uh, some anger, uh, some mixed emotions towards their birth mother. I'm just going to tell you all what I think in Please. kind of serial fashion here. Yes. Not only... I don't know what that is. Did you want to talk? Bad habit. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm really glad that you're here. Apparently, you do want to talk. Go ahead. No, go ahead. My turn? Always is, Dr. Phil. Seriously. I'm hard to shock, because I've, I've, I've seen it all. Wow. But I, are, are you not wanting to listen to me? Oh, I'm listening. Because I'm happy to excuse you if, if you don't want to be here. I'm listening. 
because uh, you know you can pout on your own time or you can listen to me because I'm trying to give you some help. Okay. I find it shocking that you are indignant that one or both of these girls have issues with you. Rather than getting uh, offended by that, I would think you would be saying, man, I, I just want to see if there's some way that we can start with a truth-based foundation and move even an inch at a time going forward. My advice to you that right now is that you only have a relationship and interaction with your mother through a, a professional relationship, through a professional intermediary. Right now, I would not invite your mother into your active life. You don't owe that to her. It is a gift of access should you give it, and I would make it very, very constrained and very controlled and only under professional supervision at this point. Everything I just said to her, I say to you yes. as well. You have a lot of unfinished emotional business with this woman. Most of it is going to have to be finished with you, no matter what she ever does. You have some very open uh, wounds that need healing. And I want to bring you the professional help to help you heal those things. <laughs> You. you need some very specialized help for survivors of the things that you have been through. And, and I want to arrange for you to have that kind of help. Oh, and only, only when you have been able to do that and you can approach this position, this relationship from a position of strength and forgiveness, should you engage with your mother at this point. Any, any other time, it will be toxic for you and for her. Can we do that? Absolutely. I hope you support that as well, and I, I wish you well. You, you say you've got a great facility and you're working through yes. it. And stay with that, and hopefully this can grow step at a time and within strong, strong boundaries. Fair enough? Yes. yes. All right, coming up, it's a reunion that made national news, and we've been following it exclusively. For the first time, baby Veronica's parents are speaking out publicly since regaining custody of their daughter. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Baby Veronica is the legal daughter of an adoptive couple, yet they don't know where the child is. We're going to go drive by the location that they believe is where she's being hidden away. That's it right oh. there. There she is. Oh, my God. A lot of people thought she won't remember you. She won't remember the house. How was that experience? Well, reunions aren't always easy, as we have often seen. But today, Troy Dunn is joining me with the latest news in the custody battle over baby Veronica. Now, Matt and Melanie's story captured the nation when their two-year-old adoptive daughter, Veronica, whom they raised from birth, was ordered to be handed over to her birth father due to a little-known law called the Indian Child Welfare Act. I sat down with him a year ago, uh, so here's what happened. Veronica is our daughter. And she'll always be our daughter. When we found out that Veronica's birth father was filing for custody, we were shocked. Cherokee Nation came to court to represent the birth father. After months of appeals and requests for emergency stays, the judge ruled in favor of the biological father and the Cherokee Nation, saying that the Capo Biancos had to hand Veronica over to her biological father. How did you explain this to her? What did you say? How do you explain to a two-year-old that you might not ever see them again? As much as we wanted to run, we just tried to do the right things. The tribe has an interest in protecting its children. This is child is more, more Hispanic than Indian, more white than Indian. It's about this father was a citizen of the government. Are you suggesting this child was stolen? Did these parents ever pick up the phone at the time of adoption, call this father, send him an email, send him a text in this modern age of communication? No. I'll tell you what I hear you saying is what's best for the tribe and not what's best for the child. 
He has the right to say whether or not he wants to be a father, and he didn't get asked that question. Father is not just a noun, it's a verb. And if he says, I give you exclusive custody, then you can't then second guess what's being said. His consent was not obtained as a law requires, and it was that simple. I believe you'll have her back. Um, if the Supreme Court takes our case, I think we have a, a good chance. Well, Matt and Melanie got their wish not long after appearing on our show, but things didn't turn out to be as easy as they had hoped. Take a look. Big news coming out of Washington, D.C. today, where the Supreme Court has overturned the use of the Indian Child Welfare Act in the baby Veronica case. Obviously, we're very happy with the ruling that came down today. This time, and for the first time, the adoptive couple wins. Baby Veronica is the legal daughter of an adoptive couple from James Island, yet they don't know where the child is. Dustin Brown was supposed to appear in court while Dustin Brown never showed up. This is my family, and I protect them. Apparently, some people can just circumvent the law. We followed the law all along. We handed her over. It killed us to do it. I have absolutely no doubt if we didn't hand our daughter over, we would have both been arrested. Mm -hmm. No doubt. So what happens next? If they're not going to bring our daughter to us, we're going to go to Oklahoma to get our daughter. We're going to go drive by the location that somebody has tipped you that they believe is where she's being hidden away. It's not her home. Take a left where that white gate is. That's it right oh, there. Oh, they're out there. There she is. Oh, my God. There she is. You got it. She's right there in front of the house. She no, is. I just bush. saw her. And that's it. She's gone. It's okay, baby. I'm glad she's fine. And I'm just glad we know where she is. Well, desperate and unable to be with their daughter, Matt and Melanie were running out of options. So Troy reached out to Veronica's birth mother in hopes she could convince Dustin to return Veronica. Well, she spoke exclusively to us. Here's what she had to say. How long did you date Dustin? We dated off and on for a few years. After I found out that I was pregnant, he got real distant. The story that it seems to be circulating is that he denies that he ever told you that he didn't want to have anything to do with Veronica while you were still pregnant. Six months into my pregnancy, I text him and I asked him, was he wanting to be in her life? And whenever I got a text back, he let me know that he wanted to sign his rights away and that he had spoken to his family and they had all agreed that it would be best for him if that's what he did. And you saved that text? Yes. It broke my heart. I, I had no idea on how to handle that or how to take it. And I, it pretty much just broke me. Why did you choose Matt and Melanie to be the parents of your daughter? They were just so awesome and very, very, warm and down to earth. Neither one of them ever felt pushy at all. They made sure that I knew that I would be there right along with her. Whenever she first walked, everything. They let me know that I would not miss a beat. Up until Dustin took her, you had had regular contact with your daughter? Yes, I was able to contact her whenever I wanted to. So when Matt and Melanie were cut off from contact with Veronica, you were too? Yes, that's really painful. When you were told that Dustin had successfully pulled her from the home of Matt and Melanie, did that make sense to you? No. He is not the one who was there for her. How does everybody know that he is not gonna walk away like he did whenever I was pregnant? I don't trust that. I can't trust him to be there for her when she's gonna need him. What would you like to say to Dustin right now? I would just love for him to hand her over to them and let her live the normal, happy life that I chose for her, that I had to choose for her. Well, Troy, you, you have been working on this for a long time and we've been obviously taping things as we went along. So give us the update. 
what is what is what's happening now? What's going on now? Where is she? Veronica is at home with Matt and Melanie, and <laughs> right. Well, you know, I'll tell you, Dr. Phil, this is probably going to go down in the history books as the most contested adoption in the history of history of America. And not everybody feels the way this audience just did as they clapped. There are a large group of people out there who would have applauded had I said she was kept by her birth father, Dustin Brown. But I think what people need to understand that isn't getting told, and this is the first place it's been said, those two families are in constant communication now. And the fact is that Veronica will be raised by all the people who love her. We're going to have an exclusive interview with her parents and hear more about this plan and how it's going when we come back. Finally, after much of searching, legal battles, and mediation, Veronica was returned to her adoptive parents, Matt and Melanie. Now, for the first time, speaking exclusively to us, we'll hear how Veronica is adjusting to her new old life. Hey. Hello. Good to see you. Absolutely. How did it feel finally to actually hold Veronica? Incredible. And we were kind of going in gentle, and we didn't want to be too forward or overwhelming for her. So it was a very gradual process. A lot of people thought she won't remember you, she won't remember the house. How was that experience? She remembered a lot of things that, yeah, I mean, we knew she was going to remember a lot, but some of the detail that she remembers is just insane. Yeah, but we're just trying to get back to normal. Everybody wanted to know if there was any communication between her adoptive parents and her biological parents in her life. Yeah, there is. There, there absolutely is. It's been positive, and um, we're feeling really good about it. So for people who were worried that Veronica was having to be pulled into one family and away from another, that's not turned out to be true. No. All the people that love her, all of her family members, will be in contact with her. I think that's pretty close to a happy ending. As it should be. Thank you to Dr. Phil for supporting us throughout all of this. Um, we also want to say thank you to all of the people that helped us along the way. Our attorneys were amazing in our community. Thank you because we're home and Veronica's doing great. Well, Veronica's birth father recently held a press conference. Let's hear what he had to say. During this four-year fight to raise my daughter, I had to make many difficult decisions. The most difficult decision of all was to let Veronica go with Matt and Melanie at Bianca last month. The time has come for me to let Veronica live a normal childhood, and that means stopping the ongoing litigations here in Oklahoma. It is my greatest hope we can work together on a solution that is best for Veronica. And to Veronica, never ever for one second doubt how much I love you, how hard I fought for you, or how much you mean to me. I miss you more than words can express, and I will always love you until the day I die. Well, so everybody's in contact so she can continue her relationship with bio mom and dad and adoptive parents and extended families on both sides. Yes. You know, both families have made a promise to one another to not speak anymore in the media, which is why they're not sitting with us here today. Right. Um, but I will tell you, having ju I just left their home two days ago, Matt and Melanie's, and uh, Christy, the birth mother, was there, and they had just finished a phone call with Dustin. Veronica will grow up with all of them. I will. That's great. Um, well, I want to thank all of my guests today, and a special thanks to my good friend, Troy Dunn. You've been really working hard on both of these stories, so thank you for that. <laughs> Troy and his team continue to stand ready to help those searching for a long-lost dove one. You can reach Troy at TroyTheLocator.com. Very clever title. Yeah, we're uh, for, <laughs> for those of you who follow me on Facebook, I'll send a link to Troy's Facebook as well, so it'll make it easy to find. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Yeah.